So you guys might have seen the WWDC or the Worldwide Developer Conference that is created by Apple. Let's take it from the top. Good morning. And due to the coronavirus or the pandemic, there wasn't an actual live event for you to see the different features. So what I'm going to talk about in this video is about what features you should care as a Flutter developer. So there is tons of features that the Apple organization or the team has created, whether it is good or bad. Let's start off with the first one, iOS 14. iOS 14 is here. So iOS 14 has a lot of major updates and the first update that you probably want to think about or maybe be interested is called the home widgets or we call it widgets in Flutter. Who copy who? We don't know. But widgets in the home screen basically means it is just a snippet of your app, just like what you have on your Android phone. So you can just make your life so much better and easier and faster to access any very important features of the app that you really want to use. Home widget has been explored or has been bumped up inside the issues of Flutter. And then maybe we are able to, you know, use Flutter rendering engine, I don't know, but it's just an exploration stage where the Flutter team has to decide whether they are going to put in effort in order for them to create this feature with the Flutter SDK. So that's the first thing. Examples of how you're going to use the home widgets is for example, you have a music player and you want to showcase the music player at the home screen so that users don't have to go to the app in order for you to play the music. So the next thing is app clips. So app clips are basically mini apps in Android. Then for mini clips in iOS 14, what it basically does is that, for example, using NFC, it allows you to open a miniature app that is open in your iPhone. So what if you have, for example, a payment system that you create in Flutter, you would want the person to use the NFC function in order for you to open up the app very quickly and pay through the app itself. So the thing about this mini app is that it is not something that you're asking the user to download. You're just showcasing a very small part of the app for you to do, for example, payments or even like maybe borrowing a library book using that mini app feature because using NFC, you can take down the ID of the person and then put it in the system. So there are some use cases you can use with this, something like mini apps, but I'm not too sure what it can be done. From the examples that the WWDC have shown is that you could probably pay like through Etsy or look through more inside Etsy or you can, you know, take uh, for example, a scooter ride just using a mini app. So we'll see how it goes. Developers will create app clips from a part of an app using Xcode and the full power of the SDK. To ensure that they launch quickly, they'll need to be less than 10 megabytes in size. So next is picture in picture. So what it basically means is that you're able to see, for example, video clips running while you're going through your, for example, swiping through the app screen. This has been implemented in the Android system where you're able to see, for example, a YouTube video, and then you could maybe take notes of the YouTube video they are watching. So now it's iOS turn for it to implement inside its operating system. However, I watched the video by Techlin and he has mentioned that it will not be able to use third party services for you to use this picture in picture mode. So you probably can't use YouTube to watch a video while you take notes. So I'm not very sure about this feature, whether it is applicable to YouTube or any streaming services like for example, Netflix and such, but we will see how it goes. So in terms of Flutter, I'm not too sure whether they are going to do this picture in picture kind of feature because I think it takes a lot of time and you probably have to work with the Apple team. Since you don't have the approval from Apple, I doubt that Flutter is able to dig into the SDK of the new iOS 14. We'll see how it goes. So that's it about iOS 14 for a Flutter developer. Now I'm going to move on with Flutter Web. Well, Flutter Web doesn't have a lot of changes because Web itself is very 
universal, you know. But the thing that the WWDC has showcased is that Safari has finally support WP images. So what's WP images? So WP images is created by Google or acquired by Google. I don't know which one, but then it is just a compression algorithm or whatever uh, feature in order for you to make it smaller and helps you to load images faster. Or even you can use WebP inside your Android and iOS devices. So if you have big images in PNG and JPEG, I would recommend you to use WebP because it will shrink the size of images inside your app. Just a tip. All right, so now with WebP being supported in Safari, you are able to now having your images load faster, which I think is amazing. Because previously when I was creating some Flutter web apps, I tried to use the WebP images and it didn't load on Safari. So I was thinking, why is that so? And then I knew some browsers does not support WebP and now Safari supports WebP. So another thing that I want to talk about is PWA. So if you have your Flutter app inside iOS and Android and then you want to put that iOS app into Safari, for example, then you're able to do so because now you have the WebP supported in Safari. So any images on your Android or iOS app with the WebP format will be rendered inside Safari, which is the default browser of iOS for now, which is another thing that I want to talk about is that for the new iOS is you're able to set your default email and your default web browser. And the thing is, that's amazing. So now you don't need to care about Safari anymore if you want to do PWA, but there are tons of users who are using Safari as their web browser inside their iOS phone. So that's something that I think is really beneficial in terms of images, all right? So now your assets can be universal in iOS and Android. So in terms of the web side of the WWDC, there isn't a lot of things. But one feature that has been implemented in the new tablet, which is iPad OS, where you're able to use Scribble on any text field and be converted into text. So Flutter supports Apple Pencil, but the thing is now you have to make it support Scribble, which is a feature that's available on iPad OS, where it supports your Scribbles where you're able to write using Apple Pencil and then it can be converted into text. So for Flutter, I think this is a feature that's really needed because it is already being implemented in a new iPad OS and with this, you're able to put any scribbles into text very easily. So for the Flutter team, I'm not too sure on whether they're going to focus on this if it's very in high priority. But this is something that I think should be implemented because since most apps use the native language of Swift or Objective-C, with these scribbles, it is already natively inserted inside their UI. So Flutter being a toolkit using Skia as a rendering engine, I don't know whether they support this thing. Maybe using platform channels, I don't know. So we'll see how it goes. So lastly, we come to the macOS side of the updates. So macOS main updates are is a lot more on the UI changes where now the icons on your macOS desktop is no longer freeform shapes, but now it is more curvy, squarish kind of shape. So if you were to create a macOS desktop using the Flutter SDK, you probably have to create an icon that is squarish, something like your app icon in the iOS app store. Also, one thing to take note is that for the iOS App Store, in order for you to continue using the App Store for your iOS app, you need to declare all the tracking services that you put in inside your app. So for example, Google Analytics or even dynamic links and whatsoever. So these are the things that you should take note when you want to port your current app in the App Store into the new iOS 14 app store because the Apple team is very, very concerned about privacy. So they really want to know what your app consists. So other than having ads, now you need to put in what tracking system you have put inside the app. So that's a little bit of update. So getting back to the desktop Mac OS, another thing that has changed is the UI. So basically 
rather than it being a metal kind of design where it's opaque, now it becomes translucent. And you know the three dots, the three action dots where it is red, yellow and green, now they have changed in terms of their UI. So in terms of creating a Mac OS desktop app using Flutter, the Flutter team probably has to make tweaks according to the UI changes. And there is a lot more issues that I have never covered, but it's already available inside the Flutter issues. So where the project name is iOS 14, and you can look through more of the, the different updates on the new iOS 14 feature that's rolling out very, very soon this year, next year, I'm not too sure. So that's about it of the new features that you should care as a Flutter developer. If you have a current Flutter app, or if you have a Flutter app that you want to build in iOS or Mac OS or iPad OS. So if I'm missing out any important features, leave it in the comments down below. So that's it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this video, subscribe down below. And that's about it. Stay safe and all the best. Bye. Bye.